Not to over dramatize this whole situation, but I can't imagine a more important time in the history of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You got the first pick in the draft. You got an organization and an owner that wants to win in the worst way. You tell me again when in history you'll have that a line like this. I want this team to play so fast. And fast doesn't mean 4 3 40. Fast means everything you got. You know what that music means? It means the hunt is back. Coming soon to Jaguars.com and Jaguars YouTube. You'll get exclusive access just like that of head coach Urban Meyer and general manager Trent Bulky and more. So stay tuned for the hunt premiere of the 2021 offseason. Welcome in Jaguars Drive Time, a Tuesday in March. I promise it is our somewhat last slow week, I guess you can call it, with free agency coming up next week. But this is not slow because we have a new co-host just for this week. Lonnie Martz, former Jaguars linebacker, joins the show now. Lonnie, how's it going? It's like it's getting better all the time. Yes, I love it. And Lonnie, you are doing great things in the Jacksonville community, so we're going to talk much more about that. But Brian, like I promised, free agency coming soon and the franchise tag coming up. So we have some news, but next week we expect to be, I guess you can say, a splash of a program. Well, let's just jump right in then. Speaking of splash, get to big things and get Lonnie involved. I, I, I do want to say this about Lonnie before you do that. Mm -hmm. Um I knew of Lonnie before he came to Jacksonville uh, because of an NFL Films clip. And Lonnie's got a smile on his face, even though he's not on camera right now, because he knows this clip. <laughs> and it was opening day 1993, and he was with Kansas City. And it was Joe Montana's first game uh, as the new quarterback of the Chiefs. And so it was a really big deal. And it was opening day in Tampa at the old Sombrero. And there's a great clip of this linebacker from Tulane walking down the um, the ramp to the field, and there's a veteran, a World War II veteran. Ah, Lonnie was probably 85 or 90 at that point, and he was holding the flag and kind of standing there. Here, all these players go by him, but Lonnie stops to have a conversation with him, and it's a famous clip, and it was so poignant, and, and I bring it up every time I introduce Lonnie, but it, it, it explains who he is. He's not just a football player, although he was, and he wasn't just a professional there to get paid, though he was. He was a fan of the game and a fan of his fellow American. And when he showed up in Jacksonville in 1999, I brought that up to him. And, and we've had long conversations about it since. Lonnie, thanks for making time to join the show. Well, thank you for having me. Thank both of you for having me. This is, this is a great deal. I love it. Of course, Lonnie, we were joking Good. around. He's well, we see him around the stadium. He, he, mm -hmm. He's here, Ashlyn, on game day a lot. Uh, so, you know, let's reintroduce him to the fan base who may not go back to 2000 and uh, have some fun this morning. Let's do it. Let's get into big things. And big thing one is uncertainty. The franchise tag deadline as of now is set for 4 o'clock this afternoon. And we have yet to hear what the Jaguars will do if they'll use it on any players, possibly this guy, Cam Robinson. We saw a lot of moves last night, however, around the NFL, for example, Marcus May franchise tag with the Jets, Dak Prescott getting that huge deal. So stay tuned. Maybe something will happen this afternoon for the Jaguars. But right now, that tag deadline, 4 o'clock this afternoon. So time is ticking. Let's go big thing, too, and that is pressure. Coach Urban Meyer answered some questions to Jaguars.com, and he said, you're not going to believe this, that there was a reason he stood this close to Trevor Lawrence on his pro day, and he said, Life is all about how you handle pressure. Safe to say Trevor Lawrence, I think, handled it pretty well that day. Big thing three is culture fits free agency next week, starting next Wednesday, and you have a period before where you can start talking to these free agents. So who fits in Jacksonville? Maybe it's a veteran wide receiver. Maybe it's a wide receiver who's played here before. Maybe it's a wide receiver who is fascinated by a rookie quarterback coming to Jacksonville. I'll say this, man, this probably was the most uh, tuned in to the college football playoff that I had been, you know, which is 
which is funny, you know, watching some of the young quarterbacks, man, and just watching Trevor Lawrence's pro day and things like that. And I think he's going to be an outstanding player in this league. You know, also, you know, guys like Justin Fields and, you know, watching those guys play, you know, it definitely does open open my mind up personally, you know, to, you know, the possibilities of, of different situations, you know, and again, and I'm, I'm a person, I'm not, I'm not opposed to anything, you know, like I said before, man, um, I think that everything is on the table. That, as you know, was Bears wide receiver Allen Robinson, who there's some rumors, will he become a free agent? Will the Bears let him go? Will they tag him? Maybe this afternoon. So, Lonnie, I go to you. Free agency coming up next week. Who do you see fitting here in Jacksonville? They have a lot of needs, but they also have a lot of money. And, and that's, Ashlyn, that, that's what I think is the most important thing right now. They have a lot of money and they have a lot of needs. So, again, I, I think it's whoever, whoever they feel like Urban Meyer would like to have in, in his, uh, uh, his corral is who they're going to go get. And I think it's going to be a wide receiver. And I also think it's going to be uh, a couple linemen. And again, you, when you build teams that, that win championships, which I know they want to do, you're going to find linemen first. And it always starts with linemen, offensive linemen, defensive linemen. So uh, wide receiver and some linemen. Lonnie, let me jump in because I know you're close with Tony Dungy. In fact, you and I did a virtual uh, event with Tony and Derek Brooks a few weeks ago for your Level the Playing Field Foundation, which we're going to talk about coming up. And the, the thing that just resonated with me listening to you guys talk is the culture that Tony Dungy built. Culture is one of those words that just gets bandied about like celebrity and diversity and culture. I mean, we hear them all the time and we don't get enough context. So, you know, take me into that Buccaneers locker room for a minute and tell me what the culture was like because Urban Meyer is trying to create a very specific championship caliber culture. What are you looking for in any free agent when you write that check? Um, you're looking for a guy that's going to come in and he's going to be a, 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 you know, we talk about value. He adds value and adding value nowadays seems like it's only about how you produce on the, on the field, but value is, is much more than that. And in the Buccaneers locker room, it was about value off the field as well as value on the field, because we, we would go to each other's houses. We would, we would hang out with one another. It wasn't just on the field and in the office, we would literally hang out with one another and get to know each other's families. And so when you're playing with a guy and you know his family and you know what he's about, you know, morally and, and just his values, you, you tend to fight a little harder in, in, the, in the battle when you're out on the field. And so building that is, is it takes time. It's, it's chemistry, as they say. And, and not everybody's going to get along, but for the most part, we, 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 it, it was Buccaneers against the world. And so that, that helped solidify our, our culture. And how about as a player, right? I mean, you, you were in Kansas City, and then you went to Tampa. You spent a little time as a Tennessee Oiler. There weren't many Tennessee Oilers, just two seasons of that group before they became the Titans. And then you came here as a player. What are you looking for besides the check? And we understand it's pro football. It's about the money. But beyond the check, what is a player looking for when he signs on to a situation like Jacksonville, where they're starting over? Uh, you want to be in a, a, a great community, and Jacksonville is a great community. And so uh, when I came here, I didn't know how I would be received by the community, but uh, I knew I had to play well on the field so that I would be able to actually have a chance to be in the community. And so uh, a great community, a great place to raise a family. I was a family man, so that, that mattered to me. And uh, obviously, I stayed here because it was a great community, and I, I wanted to I wanted to be here. I wanted to grow with this city. And so, again, as I come in, yes, it's about the check. Yes, I want to I want to play. I want to have a great time. I want to have a chance to win a championship. But I really want to be a part of the community. A great community to live in, a great community to play in, and a great community for free agents to come. And who better than Judy Batista from NFL.com to come on Jaguars Drive Time next to talk all about that. Stay tuned. Jags Drive Time is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. By Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health, changing health care for good.
Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Bold statement. Saving money with Geico is almost better than watching football. Think about it. When you're watching the game, yelling at the quarterback to throw the ball, throw it, Williams is wide open, why are you doing this to me? Use that rocket arm, come on! They don't listen to you. But if you went into a Geico office and yelled, someone please help me save some money on car insurance, everyone would hop to it. Except the intern because it's his first day and he doesn't even have a computer yet. See? Better. Switch and save with Geico. It's almost better than sports. Jaguars fan, Brian Sexton here. I've discovered something that will take your tailgates to the next level this football season. Bernie Grills. You've never seen anything like these portable all-wood grills. Bernie's are convenient, affordable, and simple to use with no messy cleanup. Bernie's real alder wood flavor makes burgers and brats taste delicious. I grilled some steaks on mine the other night, and they were incredible. So get your Bernie Grill for the next game at BernieGrill.com or at Amazon. Bernie Grill. Light. Grill. Done. Welcome to a new era of Jaguars football. The reload has begun, beginning with new head coach Urban Meyer. Don't miss out on the best seats before they're gone. Lock in your tickets now for the 2021 season by placing a deposit at jaguars.com. Busy week here in Jacksonville and in the NFL as a whole as the tag deadline is this afternoon and free agency starts next week. So, Who better to join the show than NFL columnist for NFL.com and NFL Network's Judy Batista. Judy, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I won't lie to you, Judy. I was uh, a little bummed out driving to work this morning. I saw your colleagues tweet Ian Rappaport that Leonard Williams was placed on the franchise tag and Jaguars fans were looking at him this entire offseason to maybe come to Jacksonville, but I'm hearing there might be another Giants defensive lineman that is still in hope. Yeah, now that they have, um, you know, taken care of, or at least for the time being, if they're going to put the tag on Leonard Williams, I think the question is now what becomes of Dalvin Tomlinson? Um, Because they would love to keep him too. Uh, He is a great, he's a huge run stuffer, uh, also a great team leader guy. They'd love to keep him. The question is, can they afford to keep both of them there pretty tight uh, up against the cap, as so many teams are? Can they afford to keep both of them? And then they also need this offseason to find an edge rusher. Um, And those, as we know, uh, cost a pretty penny. So I think the real question for the Giants is that they had to keep Leonard Williams, 11 and a half sacks, a career breakout season. But now um, what becomes of of Dalvin Tomlinson and how much can they invest in the defensive line? Judy, we just uh, had a clip of uh, Allen Robinson on with uh, Chris Collinsworth talking about Jacksonville. Obviously, he was a second round pick here back in uh, 2014. My question to you, and he was talking about Trevor Lawrence. From your perspective, how much does a quarterback, a rookie, but a quarterback talented like Lawrence is, attract free agents for Urban Meyer and the Jaguars? Um, I think quite a bit, right? I mean, and I think we're actually seeing more of that in the NFL. You're sort of seeing that like NBA effect where players want to play with other players. Um, You know, obviously we saw it in Tampa Bay when when Brady went there. You saw players want to be in Tampa Bay with Brady because you knew it was going to give you a chance. But I think good players gravitate to good, good players Trevor Lawrence is not going to just, we assume, is not just going to be a good player. I mean, this, we assume, is going to be a transcendent quarterback um, and a franchise quarterback for a long time in Jacksonville. And I do think that helps. Listen, Jack- Jacksonville needs pieces, right? A lot of pieces. But they also have the ammunition. They've got the high draft picks and they've got a lot of money under the salary cap. Um, and if they make good decisions, they they can be competitive fairly quickly. We've seen this in the NFL. If you can make good decisions quickly and you get good quarterback play, 
you can turn the ship around. It doesn't have to be a long, arduous rebuild. You've already got some young talent in Jacksonville on the roster. So I think, you know, there's hope for a, a fairly quick bounce back and certainly having Trevor Lawrence there as, you know, as the tent pole figure um, helps you attract other players. Obviously, ultimately in free agency, money talks, but they've got plenty of money. Um, so I think having Trevor Lawrence there can only enhance um, everything that they're trying to do. And, and, and he is also a culture setter. And that may be the most important thing they're trying to do right away. Absolutely, Judy. I was reading all last week and I saw tweets like it's going to be a massacre this week of everyone cutting players that are good players. And we're seeing a little bit of that, but I don't think it's to that level. Do, do you expect that with this salary cap being so jumbled because of COVID and the TV deals that we're going to see that many good players become available? Unfortunately, that that's the expectation from everybody you talk to in the league. I think the reason we haven't seen it yet is because the salary cap hasn't been set. So we don't quite know. I mean, we have a pretty good idea of where it's going to be. We don't know precisely where it's going to be. But, um, you know, teams are, are going to be up against it. I mean, Jacksonville is in a very fortunate position to have lots of space. But uh, teams are going to be very tight. Um, and, and I think you're going to see really good um veteran mid-career players uh, get squeezed. You know, the, the rookies who are coming in are still going to be on relatively affordable contracts. And obviously, superstar players who command, you know, you just saw the Dak Prescott deal that got done last night. I mean, those players you're keeping, but the middle class of NFL player is, is going to get squeezed here. You're going to see a lot of contract restructuring, I think, a lot of teams asking their their players to move money around to help the team out. But yeah, I think unfortunately, you're probably going to see a lot of names you recognize um, get cut loose. Judy, the story that I'm just captivated by is is the New Orleans Saints. And, and the reason I am is I remember the Jaguars in 2002 when they were in similar dire cap circumstances with a pretty talented roster. And if it hadn't been for the expansion draft and the Houston Texans taking some of those players, Gary Walker and Tony Baselli, off of their schedule, off of their salary cap, I don't know how they would have gotten under the cap. I'm looking at the Saints right now. Is there any concern from people you talk to about their ability to get under the cap? I mean, that could be a bloodletting if they don't. You know, they have had a reputation over the last however many years now of they they manage to do it right i mean they move a lot of money around first of all the big the big thing is uh, we're assuming we've all been assuming for months that drew Brees is going to retire obviously that will move a lot of money off and presumably you then have a quarterback who is playing for a lot less money than drew Brees was making um they have been able they have been able to do it but when i see his name uh, the saints linked for instance to you know yesterday i saw you know why not russell wilson there and i'm like how how could they afford a russell wilson I, you know given their cap situation um again i think they're one of the teams that you're going to see go to their players and say let's redo your deal let's move some money around keep in mind teams are squeezed this year because of the salary cap situation because the drop in revenue from from the COVID season because there were no fans in stands but that's not going to be forever, right? As a matter of fact, it's going to get markedly better very soon because these new TV contracts are going to come online in a few years, and that's going to send the salary cap way up. Um, you know, the, the TV money could double um, in the next few years. So um, it, this is a short-term problem that they've got right now. They've got to get through it, and they've got to structure contracts to get through this. But, but if you can push the money far enough out, if, you know, by a few years... The salary cap is going to be your friend at that point if you're a team. So um, I think, you know, most of these teams hire very, very smart people to manage the cap. Um, and I think the, the best teams and the Saints have historically been one of the best teams at at figuring out how to do it um, and keeping their team intact. And I would expect I'd be I, I don't expect them to blow up the Saints. I expect them to figure out ways to move money around. They've got a lot of work to be done but we always joke this offseason that it's a great year to be rich like the Jaguars and have all kinds of cap space so I ask you Judy with the tag deadline this afternoon at four o'clock we think as of now 
What do you think is going to yeah. happen with Cam Robinson? I mean, for as from my standpoint, I can't see them going and drafting a left tackle to replace him and trust a rookie of protecting Trevor Lawrence's blind side. So it's it's a little tricky here how they're going to work this out. Well, I think the first point um, we should make is, is the tagline really going to stay today? Uh, or, or are they going to move the tag deadline because they still don't know uh, – what the salary cap number is going to be. So that's the first question. The second point um, about the Jaguar situation is even if they don't tag Cam Robinson, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to start a rookie at left tackle. They could go out and sign. Uh, again, this is why it is great to have a lot of salary cap space this year. They could sign one of the left tackles who's going to be on the market. Um, they will have the money to do it. Um, and a lot of other teams won't have the money to do it. So they're in a fortuitous situation that way. I agree with you. I can't imagine you would go into the season opener with a rookie left tackle protecting the blind side of your, you know, the, the franchise, that that the person that the entire franchise is going to be built around. I, that, that's, I can't envision them doing that. So even if they don't tag Cam Robinson, even if they can't work out a contract to get him back here, I would expect there to be a veteran left tackle in their future. All right, well, we'll see what happens. All kinds of questions with not a lot of answers as of now. We're all kind of just flying by the seat of our pants today. But Judy Batista, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a busy day. Always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Thanks so much. When we come back, March is Women's Judy. History Month. So we're going to feature that coming up right here on Jaguars Drive Time. Dreamfinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. Dreamfinders has townhomes, single family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move in ready homes. Quality, value, customization. That's the Dreamfinders difference. Call 904 738 0165 or online at dreamfindershomes.com. Dreamfinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Price is subject to Change without notice. Equal housing opportunity. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. Jag's Drive Time is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. Next Grill, everyone's invited. And at Deco, visit adecousa.com. A little girl that looks up to me, um, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, now hopefully I'm giving her the right you know, vibes and the right lessons as a father, uh, but I already know I'm be super protective and she gonna have me wrapped around her fingers, she already do. DJ Shark Jr. and his wife Chantel are expecting a baby girl here in the coming months, so congratulations to them. And speaking of girls, yesterday was International Women's Day and March's Women's History Month. We're continuing our series showcasing all the wonderful female employees for the Jaguars. So here is two more for you this week. Check it out. Well, yeah, I think when people hear NFL cheerleader, all they think about is just being a beauty queen. But as cheerleaders, we've evolved. I mean, on our team alone, we have 
nurses, we have mothers, I'm a lawyer, we have had doctors on the team, teachers. So cheering right now is so much more than just being a beauty queen. You know, we are all beautiful, but we are also professionals. You know, we are also role models. We are in the community and being a cheerleader encompasses so much more than just the average everyday beauty. We as cheerleaders, we are ambassadors for the organization and we are truly empowered to use our platform and to use the Jaguars to show what we stand for and I think that that is an amazing step towards progress. 2015 I was back here as an intern and that was the first time they'd ever had a female in the training room here with the Jaguars and so um, that was completely new. I remember very distinctly standing in the middle of the training room and it's all glass here and as you can see <laughs> but all glass down the windows and I just remember standing there like a fish in a fishbowl um, and just being stared at and everyone taking double looks and and you know every game we went to everything that we did I was the only one <laughs> um, and now it's been really cool we've had a lot of female students we've had uh, female interns we've had you know it, it's it's now a norm here so I don't know that we're we're quite there um, I think there is some of that fishbowl mentality type of thing um, and, and people still do take a second look but I think we're we've definitely made a lot of progress over the last five years so I had something on my mirror when I started here as an intern I had written on my mirror uh, beat the boys is what I said um, just because it it motivated me and it was something so stupid but I think you do have to come out of the gate really strong I think you have to come out the gate with a mentality of yes I'm going to be better yes I'm going to you know beat the boys per se um, just as a matter of you have to work a little bit harder than everyone else um, and you do and and that doesn't make it right or wrong you just you work a little bit harder and you shine a little bit brighter and, and that's what you do from day to day. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and I am proud to announce that Good Greek Moving and Storage is now the official mover of your Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are making all of the right moves, and you should too. So when it's time for you to move, do it like the Jags and call the Good Greek. Simply dial star star Greek from your cell or go to goodgreek.com. That's goodgreek.com. Every month, Good every Greek week, Moving and month. Storage, official movers of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. The best thing about working at Fair and Farrah is all of the employees. We all work together. It's extremely enjoyable to come to work every day. There's a, um, a common cause or goal. No matter what your job is, we're all there for the client. We are dedicated to our clients 100%. We do everything it takes to maximize the value of their claims. Fair and Farrah is really the Farrah family. When they choose us, they choose a family to fight for them and to protect them and to make sure that they're in a good place and that they have somebody on their side. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Jacksonville. We're back. Jaguars drive time on a Tuesday. That field and um, it's seen better days. Monster Jam this past weekend put a ton of dirt on the field, but I promise it'll look better come September 2021 season. Approaching quickly. We're back. Jaguars drive time. Lonnie Martz with us this morning and it's been so busy. We've Barely had the chance to talk to him, but Lonnie, I want to talk about this. The Level the Playing Field Leadership Academy that you have started here in Jacksonville. Tell me all about it. <laughs> but it's, it's actually my vision of investing in boys of color from single parent homes, which are athletes. Uh, and it's important to me, honestly, because someone gave me an opportunity and, and they continue to give me opportunities. And so when, when I can do that for someone else, I'm, I'm paying it forward. Um, we would love to have our young boys, uh, as we say, level the playing field. We, we would like them to, yeah, well, let me, let, me, let me say this. When young men grow up in poverty, uh, they look at athletics as a way out. And I think that that does happen for, a, not, not a majority, a, a minority of boys, they tend to, play well, they get out of poverty, 
And I think you have to give them more. Uh, we know that athletics, you need more than athletics to thrive in today's society. And so we are trying to make sure that we give them every opportunity to have more than one option when they have to hang up those uniforms, which everyone has to do. You know, Lonnie, when we first talked about this last summer, uh, you and your lovely wife and I were on a phone call. You were sharing your vision. Um, it made so much sense. to uh, The hands-on approach, as opposed to writing a check or looking for some you know, a, a government solution, you dove in with both feet. And just two weeks ago, you held a, a big virtual event with, as I mentioned earlier, Tony Dungy and Derek Brooks. You've come a long way in just a short time. Tell me, you know, where on your timeline are you and what are the next steps to get Level the Playing Field Leadership Academy from the conceptual, hey, you know, jump on board with the vision to actually working with these boys and helping create the opportunities that broaden their horizons and create even more opportunities. Well, we, we are at the point where we're accepting mentors because we're going to need mentors for our boys. And we will be uh, taking applications for our boys in March because June will be when we accept our first cohort of boys, 15. Uh, and I know many people ask why only 15. It's because I think we want to get it right. And, um, you know, you have to be a parent and not, not taking a parent's place in the house, but you have to be concerned with supporting the family as well as the, the young man. And uh, I, I want to make sure I get it right. And so we are at the point where we're accepting applications for mentors and we will be accepting mentor, uh, applications for mentees in March. Uh, we have raised a, a great bit of money and um, it, it's, it's, what's really good about it is it's actually multi-year uh, funding. Uh, <laughs> you know, Mrs. Weaver, Mr. Weaver have been gracious to us. Uh, Mr. Debo has been gracious to us. And uh, we are still looking to raise the funds that we need to make sure that we can seed this program. And so we are, we are a little bit off, a little ways off, but we are doing our best to have it where we won't ever have to stop and we will get everything to our boys that they need. That is awesome. Ashlyn, I, I know you read the story in the Times Union. I did. Uh, I think you were on Channel 4 as well, Lonnie. You mentioned Mr. and Mrs. Weaver and, and Lori Dubow, uh, former Jaguars ownership have gotten involved. Outside of a small group, what's the, the larger participation been, the larger reception been for your initiative? And, and, and you tell hard truths, and I'm, I assume you're going to say that to the boys. You talk about personal accountability and, and stepping into a situation where you can create some change. How has that message, um, how's it been received? Uh, some have received it well, some haven't. Um, I, I normally get, you know, the, the question, why only boys of color? And I think you have to go to the fact that, you know, in, in, in Jacksonville, we have, uh, well, in the nation, actually, it's 80% of uh, single parent homes are led by females, and 60% of those are in poverty. And, and I, don't th I don't think that's fair. I, I, I realize that I came from a single parent home and, uh, <laughs> For my mother and I to make it out, it was a miracle. And I don't think it has to be a miracle. I think that we, we understand what is going on here and we have to step in. And so our intervention in this is about not just, you know, it's, it's, it's a move. Yes, we want e uh, equality, but this has always been going on. And it's not just boys of color, but I'm starting there because that's where I started from. And I'm trying to help and and give our young men a, a, a brighter future. And I think it'll also help a community. You always hear uh, it takes a village to raise a child, but I think that child being raised by that village should add to that village, add value to that village. And that's what we're trying to do. Ashlyn, I can keep going because I'm working in a very small way with Lonnie on this, but mm -hmm. I, I want people to know, uh, I, I fell in love with the concept um, and the idea that it was going to be hands-on and, and jumping into the trenches with Lonnie. He wasn't just going to be the face of it. He was going to be out in the trenches. He has a board of dedicated men and women who are generously donating their talent, their time, their treasure to creating this. So if 
If people ever find themselves in a position and they're looking for how they can take some of the, the problem and help build a solution, they look no further than Lonnie Martz and what he's done. Um, it, 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 you're going to hear more about this. You're going to see it. And, and Lonnie, you know, I've said this to you. Um, hopefully you never see the end result of what you've done because it just keeps going and going and going long beyond your days. Yeah, I, I, I pray that it does. And uh, I know that change and the impact that we're going to have, it's probably going to be after I'm long gone. But uh, at least we started and, and we got it done. Yeah. Absolutely. All about getting started. Proud for you and, and the job you've done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can visit levelthepayingfield.com to learn more. 15 boys. Brian has three. I don't know how he does it. So, Lonnie, best of luck. Thank you so much for coming on the show with us. And you're doing incredible work. So, everyone visit levelthepayingfield.com to get involved. And thank you for joining Jaguars Drive Time and watching us. We'll be here next week. Free agency starts. Busy week coming up. Buckle up.